And this is a third grade algebra, okay? Whatever you might want to use. PQ formel, ABC formel, Mitternachtsformel, I don't care, okay? Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to evaluate a certain integral. It kind of looks like a Gaussian integral just with a cosine wave. And the result of this integral looks way too fucking good to be actually true. Okay, um, this is just a special case of a more generalized integral. I'm not going to go into detail about the generalized version. If you want to see it, make sure to leave some um, comments down below. We are going to evaluate this and it's just freaking beautiful. The result that comes out is just um, weird but extremely satisfying. Let, let us dive right in. So um, when I first evaluated this, uh, this, the first thing that came to my mind is that the cosine is nothing other than the real part of the complex exponential function. Okay, and since we are in the Banach lattice or so the real numbers, we can actually interchange the real part operator and our integral. So overall, our cosine of 2x squared is nothing other than the real part, okay, of our e to the 2i x squared, okay, this is just what it is, and we can interchange real part and our integral. Thus, we are going to end up with the real part of the integral from negative infinity to infinity of, now, we have e to the negative x squared times e to the 2i x squared. We can use the um, function equation of the exponential function to give this thing a common base, namely e. And also we can factor out the negative x squared. I would like to factor out the negative x squared. So we are going to get negative x squared times, okay, also what are we going to get? We are going to have 1 minus 2i. Take a piece of paper, try it out for yourself. It's not hard. It's, it's seriously not hard. Now, we are going to have this thing right here. And here's one cool fact. Um, I have derived the Gaussian integral before, okay, even the generalized version. If we take a look at the Gaussian integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative ax squared, where our a is a complex number, namely 1 minus 2i then we can evaluate this thing to be the square root of pi over a. And this works if our real part of a, so for the real part of a, if it is a complex number, is greater than zero. Then all of this should work out. Real part of a is nothing other but one, meaning our integral would converge, meaning overall, uh, overall this is going to be evaluated to the real part of Okay, now using this formula, just a simple Gaussian integral, take a look into the description, there will be a link of square root of pi over our complex number, one minus two i. But we are not done yet, okay? Our result already includes our pi, our boy pi, okay? This is already in itself quite, quite cool. Like I said, the first observation is that this thing right here is kind of a Gaussian integral just with some uh, cosine wave plugged in there. Now, I would like to actually find out what the real part of one over the square root of one minus two i is. Okay, this is a complex number and we would like to evaluate this. Now at first, we are going to multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate. This is what we always would like to do when separating a real and imaginary part of complex numbers. Okay, and all we really care about is the real part of this whole thing, imaginary part, I don't care about that. Now we are going to end up with the real part of, okay, square root of pi, I'm going to put it like this. Also, okay, complex conjugate of one minus two i is one plus two i, so we are going to multiply it by the square root of one plus two i, okay, just some simple complex analysis. I'm going to write out this step, um, square root of one minus two i times the square root of one plus two i. Now we can make use of the third rules that we can multiply those together and we are going to get the magnitude squared, okay, just the magnitude of this complex number. So we are going to get the real part of square root of pi. One squared plus 2 squared is going to give us 5, okay? Square root of pi over square root of 5 times the square root of 1 plus 2i. Okay, we've gotten rid of this 
reciprocal complex number, but now we are going to end up with the square root of 1 plus 2i. And this includes some messy calculations. If you have ever calculated the square root or the third root or whatsoever of a complex number, you know that this is a bit messy. We are going to go through the process just because it's part of evaluating this integral. It's, it's quite fun, but there's a lot of algebraic manipulation we are going to do here. Now, square root of 1 plus 2i. It's going to spit out overall a complex number yet again. We are going to call it um, a plus ib. And what would be the most logical step now to do? Well, square both sides in this case. Now, squaring both sides gives us 1 plus 2i. Okay, cool thing. Being equal to, we are going to get a squared. i squared times b squared is going to give us negative b squared plus i 2ab i times 2ab. Okay, it's just a regular binomial theorem. Now, two complex numbers are exactly equal if and if they're real and imaginary parts are equal. Meaning what we have is that the imaginary part on this side is 2 and the imaginary part on this side is 2ab. Meaning we need 2 to be equal to 2ab, meaning ab must be equal to 1. This is one of the consequences. A, B is equal to 1. And if B is not equal to 0, okay, we are going to get um, A is equal to 1 over B. Also, real part, 1 must be equal to A squared minus B squared. And A squared minus B squared must be equal to 1. Now, I have solved for A right here, so why not plug this in? We are going to get on our real part that we are going to have 1 over b squared minus b squared is equal to 1, okay, and also if you bring this together we are going to get 1 minus b to the fourth power over b squared being equal to 1. Now we can multiply both sides by b squared, it's not equal to 0 simply because of um, this thing right here and we are not dealing with Grassmann numbers so never ever gonna happen, okay mate? b squared and then we can add b to the fourth power on both sides and subtract 1 and we are going to end up with b to the fourth power plus b squared minus 1 being equal to 0. I'm rushing a bit through it because it's just simple algebra and I suppose if you are watching a video on such an integral you are already familiar with simple algebraic manipulations. Now this is why I said it's going to be a bit messy um, because we have a fourth degree polynomial. Good thing is we have a fourth degree polynomial with coefficient zero wherever we have an odd exponent. Meaning we can make use of a little trick, namely a substitution. Um, let for example, I don't care, z be equal to b squared. That also means that b to the fourth power is thus z squared. Meaning for our polynomial we are going to get z squared plus z minus 1 being equal to 0, okay? Um, this is a third grade algebra, okay? All of you know how to do this. I hope you do so. Now we are going to have a quadratic pol polynomial and we can make use of the quadratic formula. I don't give a shit, okay? Whatever you might want to use. PQ formula, ABC formula, Mitternachtsformel, I don't care, okay? Um, I'm a German boy, I'm going to use the PQ formula there where P, our P, is equal to 1 and our Q is equal to negative 1. Meaning overall the two solutions to this whole ordeal are negative one half plus minus the square root of and we are going to get one quarter plus one meaning overall this is five over four square root of one quarter is just one half so a negative one plus minus the square root of five over two <laughs> maybe you can already see something what about getting rid of this negative sign and this negative sign. One plus square root of five over two, golden ratio. Does it have something to do with the golden ratio? That would be really surreal having pi and the golden ratio and the third prime number in one go right here, okay? And in one solution, that would be absolutely fantastic. Now, we have two branches. Now, here's a matter of fact, if you have those two branches, in normal case, we have a, a polynomial, uh, a quartic polynomial, so of the fourth degree, we are going to end up with four solutions. Two of those four solutions are going to be equivalent to the other two solutions in the grand scheme of things, okay, if we were to compute our real part. Meaning, we are simply going to take a look at one of those solutions, okay, this is the strategy to go with, that makes our real part stay real. Okay, this is just something that we have to do. Now, um, let me elaborate a bit more. So guys, we did it. 
Now our b is nothing other than square root of z. Okay, now if we were to plug this into here, we are going to end up with 1 over the square root of z for our a. Now we are on the right track yet again. Now, if we were to choose the negative branch, then we would definitely end up with a negative number. 1 over the square root of a negative number is going to give us something imaginary yet again, and this would make our whole real part go imaginary yet again. So it, it would be part of our imaginary part overall. Now, if we choose the positive branch right here, we are going to end up with um, negative 1 plus 2 basically. Okay, it's going to give us positive um, 1 over 2. So that would be positive. Our real part would stay positive. Now, if we just take a look at this branch, we can actually calculate our real part right here, what this actually is. Our real part is also a. Okay, this is where my thinking goes. Okay, a is 1 over square root of c. We want this real part to stay real. This is why we are going to choose the positive branch of our z. Now, our real part of our um, square root, 1 plus 2i, is nothing other than 1 over the square root of the positive branch, negative um, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Taking the reciprocal of this whole thing gives us the square root of 2 over negative 1 plus the square root of 5. Now we have an ir irrational denominator. Um, let us make this rational by multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate of this thing. So meaning we are going to multiply it by negative 1, negative square root of 5. We are going to make use of the difference of two squares formula. Same spiel here. We are going to expand our fraction. And up there, we are going to end up with, well, just what we have. So uh, negative 2 times 1 plus the square root of 5 over. OK, this is going to give us 1 minus 5 is going to give us negative 4. Negative and negative is going to cancel out. 2 over 4 is just 1 half, leaving us with the square root of, I'm, I'm running out of space a little bit, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. And this overall whew, is nothing other than our boy phi, but in square roots. Now, here we go. We have extracted our real part, and all that's left to do is to plug in our real part of square root 1 plus 2i into here. Overall, if we compute the real part of this thing, we just did that, we are going to end up with a solution of pi times phi over 5 in square roots. This is the solution to our integral. There was a lot of thinking. Holy fuck, I'm terribly sorry for this little um, square rooty part that I messed up this kind of um, yeah, this, this kind of fucked me up a bit. I don't know what I was talking about. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, it's just sort of thinking that I have to do. I don't have my notes with me as always, but we arrived at the right result using the kind of right reasoning. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and recommend channel if you like. If you want to support channel a bit more by those teachers I create, or support channel on Patreon. Up until the next video, have a flamble day. Ciao.